Hello plant lovers, Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel, Hello Plant Lovers, and a great surprise today. But first, I do post every week, so hit subscribe if you're interested and follow my adventures growing cool, cold, intermediate orchids and some other unusual plants here in Melbourne. Now, today, ta-da, look at this. Yes, plant lovers, an orchid I have longed to own and you know, sometimes this desire to own things is a little unfortunate, isn't it? But anyway, this is certainly one I have wanted to have for a while. It is possibly Dendrobium speciosum, which is an Australian native orchid, sometimes known, well, commonly known as the Sydney rock orchid. I'm gonna give you a second now to just go and Google it. You will see the flowers and it is extraordinary. And as you can see, look at the size of it. So the thing about speciosums is they are big plants, massive canes, massive size, and uh, quite vigorous growers. So let me tell you the story of this speciosum and what I'm gonna do. But first, let me move it aside. And I just want to show you something else that came my way. Look at this, it is Orchids of Australia. We're in the kitchen, by the way, because we're going to be repotting. And this is a book by W.H. Nichols, which was first published in 1969. And in fact, a lot of the illustrations are dated from the 1930s. Look at that. That is an illustration of Dendrobium speciosum. So you can see these incredible sprays of yellow Dendrobium flowers. Watch this space, but let's start from the very beginning. I actually found this book in an op shop, which is the same as a thrift store, and it was incredibly cheap. The illustrations are amazing, but I know that it's still in print. So if you're interested, you'll be able to find it. Look at the back, look at that dendrobium, my goodness. And looking through this book, can I tell you, Australia has some amazing native orchids. Anyway, let's go on to this amazing native orchid. So yes, Dendrobium speciosum. Now, you might remember I made a video about a Zygopedalum that I bought and repotted. I'll link the link here. That was listed on Facebook Marketplace and this was in fact the orchid that led me to that discovery. It was described as yellow flowering orchid. And there's a picture of it. And when I saw the canes and the leaves, I knew that it was most likely speciosum. So I was very excited. Now, look at the size of that. It's an amazing plant. Um, I think it's a division from uh, another plant that the lady had. And in such great condition generally, although we'll go through that, that uh, it was a bit of a steal. Now growing these from seed takes a long time for the plant to mature and to flower. Finding specimens like this or a division are really expensive. You do see them in florists in Melbourne in early spring when they're in bloom, but quite infrequently. I imagine the same in Sydney, perhaps other parts of the world, but they are expensive. Now this, I know talking money is vulgar, but just to give you a sense, this was $50, $50 Australian. Obviously that's a little bit less in US dollars, but nonetheless, not cheap, but also not expensive. So I think that's a good deal and I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, plant lovers, let's get to some details of this plant and I'll talk you through what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's let's just give some 101 on Dendrobium speciosum. As I said, so firstly, it's a species orchid, which is native to Australia, and it's native to the east coast of Australia. So all the way from Victoria, the state I'm in, all the way up the coast to Queensland. Now that covers a wealth of climatic zones, as you could imagine. Strangely enough though, they are all classified largely as 9B in the USDA a zone categorization, which I think just goes to show you got to kind of investigate your own local climate to figure out what is going to work. Because those zone suggestions are just that I think a suggestion. And obviously, there's a huge difference between us here in Melbourne and then further up the coast where it's subtropical. Anyway, this orchid is incredibly resilient and it can deal with quite a lot of the harsh conditions that Australia throws at it. But down to some basics, it is largely a lithophyte, hence it's called the Sydney rock orchid, but it is also sometimes an epiphyte. Now, if you imagine, if you cast yourself into the mindset of an epiphytic or a lithophytic orchid, but let's talk lithophytes, they grow in crevices and nooks of rocks, as you can imagine, where debris has accumulated. 
and it's often quite ferny, it's often quite shady around the roots because there's other plants growing around there and they get filtered light coming through the tree canopy. Now these are fairly tough and they can take a lot of strong light but not necessarily all day and direct sun in a climate like ours. Now I am in Melbourne and our climate is described as, as I said, 9B but what does that really mean when the whole coast is described as 9B? But essentially our winters don't freeze. They can get cold. In Melbourne though, at night it can get down to four, five, so you know, 45 degrees Fahrenheit, but it doesn't freeze and that's the thing. And in all of the habitat of this orchid, it doesn't freeze. It could probably take the odd gentle frost, but nothing harsh. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. Next thing to bear in mind then is the sun. It can take fairly strong sun and you can sort of acclimatize it, but look at this here. That, plant lovers, is sun damage. So although it's a very tough leathery leaf, you just need to be careful of these. So I think good morning sun is essential and then filtered light is great but strong afternoon sun when it's at its hottest is very damaging. And this was in the garden of a lady sitting underneath some shady trees, but clearly it was getting a bit too much sun. And you can see there's a lot of leaves with sun damage. I'll show you this one as well. Can you see that one there? Yeah, uh, so light is important. Now for all dendrobiums like this, these native dendrobiums, they flower in spring. They do need winter light to stimulate the flower spikes which come out of the top of the leaves. And I'll show you that there are some spent flower spikes in here and these canes can reflower year on year on. So often, you know, with some orchids, you get a new growth, it flowers and that new growth makes way for another new growth that flowers and they don't flower in the same spot not with native dendrobiums. They can flower from this same cane for basically as long as the cane lives, which can be quite a long time. Now, they are also relatively drought tolerant. They're incredibly tough. In Australia, you could literally just leave these under a tree and never water them. They can deal with the winter and the summer rain variation and the variations in temperature. Um, if you're growing them outside of their native habitat, their native range, which perhaps a lot of you are, let the medium dry out completely before you water it. Give it a good soak and then off you go. So if you imagine it's living in a crevice of a rock or a tree, a lot of water runs past, it can take up what it wants and then perhaps it might be days, weeks, perhaps even months before it rains again. Now the areas where it is growing in these crevices are often water catches and can often be quite moist and the moss and other plants around it will create a microclimate around the roots keeping them cool. So that is something to bear in mind. So maybe not let it dry out completely for a long period of time, but get it on the dry side before you water it. And with my Australian native orchids, I ease off the watering in winter as well because they're in pots. Now in their native environment, obviously winter is wetter, but you know, we're not on a mountain. We're not in a rocky crevice in Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> Okie done. So as I said, the flowering season is spring and the flower spikes set in winter. So they need the change in temperature and they need stronger winter light. You imagine in the Southern Hemisphere where we are, the light is quite low in winter. So it penetrates the tree canopy. So they're gonna get a lot of morning light and a lot of late afternoon light, which is what these need. And protection then from the midday sun, even in winter. Now I've never grown these indoors, but I imagine you can as long as you follow that light principle that in winter you give them as much direct light as you can uh, in the morning and then filtered light in the afternoon. So if you had them in a greenhouse, for example, I'm sure they'll do fine. Just try and make sure they get that strong light in the early part of the day and the temperature difference at night because that does stimulate the setting of the flowers. The other thing, of course, this might not be speciosum. Now, because they have such a huge range, basically the entire length of the country, there are lots of varieties and forms and they have different names. And you know, with, with taxonomists, there's always a change and a jockeying for position. But we'll see when it flowers. Essentially though, if it's gonna have sprays of large, quite yellowish to pale yellow flowers, then we can assume it's speciosum. But as we saw in the book, Orchids of Australia, the complete edition, there are actually quite a few noted varieties which distinguish themselves in different ways. So flower shape and pseudo bulb shape, but I'm pretty sure it's speciosum, but we'll have to wait and see. So I might just drive you all insane with jealousy by saying I bought this on Facebook Marketplace, but that is the luck of living in, a, in an area with lots of native orchid species, I suppose. But anyway, so as I said, condition though is fairly good. There are some obvious sun damage spots here. Now I've got a lot of Australian native orchids, so particularly Dendrobium kingianum, which is smaller and has pinker flowers, which I'll link here. 
and Sarcocolis, which I will link here. And they all pretty much have similar conditions. So morning sun, filtered light, particularly important to get that morning sun in winter to stimulate flowers. So none of mine uh, exhibit any sign of sun damage, but this one was pretty exposed. It was just out in the back garden. So there you go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is repot it because as we know, I am a terracotta pot kind of guy and you know, plastic is not the way of the future. As we know though with terracotta, it does dry out faster but it does evaporate, so it creates a bit of humidity, um, but you do have to watch the watering, particularly with orchids that are susceptible to drying out. This one isn't, however, so we're gonna be fine. So what I wanna do is just repot it. As you can see, the root system is amazing and looks incredibly healthy, so I'm very happy about that. There is here, can you see this cane that's closest to me here? I'll come in and show you. That's not looking so well. So I'm curious when we take it out of the pot just to see what's going on with that cane. You see it looks quite yellow and the, the cane stem actually looks a little bit withered and it feels loose in the pot. So let's investigate what's going on with that. Otherwise it feels incredibly firm, very stable and very healthy. So plant lovers, without any further ado, let's get to repotting my possibly Dendrobium speciosum. Okay, here we are plant lovers. And this is the cane I'm just a little bit concerned about. You see how it's wobbling in the pot and the color is a little off. The color of the cane is a little yellowish and jaundiced. You compare that to the others and you can see what I mean. But what you can also see, look here, look at these amazing roots. The root system is just sensational. Okay, without making too much mess, let's see what is going on with this orchid. There we are. Okay. Whoops. Look at those roots. So quite healthy, but I would say though that the medium is fairly loose, but it's also quite broken down and powdery. So it's a good time to repot, I think, and I'm going to pot it in a much looser mix. So there's a bit more aeration. Obviously, most lithophytes and epiphytes want a fairly loose medium. So I'm going to use my famous dipper that I have, of course, sterilized with rubbing alcohol. Let's just get in and get some of this soil off. The great thing about Australian dendrobiums is they are really tough. So there is generally no issue about root disturbance, I can tell you. Yeah, it's quite compacted, this soil, and quite, uh, quite broken down. So yeah, certainly a good time to be repotting this baby. Now, let's see if we can see anything with this pseudobulb here. And I wonder if this is a cakey that perhaps the lady just popped in the pot. Yes, it is. Look at that. It's not even connected and it's rotting. Um, mm. So usually cakeys are quite easy to uh, propagate from Australian native orchids. But that one, I think <laughs> you actually do need some roots on them to get anywhere. Anyway, I'm going to clean this off and then we will come back. Okay, plant lovers, this is the pot I'm using. As you can see, nice big terracotta and I am using a loose orchid bark mix. Now, maybe because familiarity does breed content a little bit, I am not going to go to any great deal of effort with this. So I'm using a lot of charcoal and then I'm using a lot of these pumice stones. Can you see those pumice stones? And can you see how sort of porous and aerated the stone is? So it absorbs a lot of water and it really aerates the soil. And as this is a lithophyte, and you know, I'm kind of crazy, I feel it needs to be near rock. So I'm just gonna pour all that in, give it a good mix. Ta-da! Then just a couple of grains of a slow release fertilizer, literally a couple. Nothing too crazy and pretty generic. And then my secret, as you know, the packet is so faded, but this is mycorrhizal fungi, which helps promote healthy root growth and it assists the plant in drawing nutrients out of the soil and making them available. So 
there's the amount. I am not even going to use an eighth of that. So literally just a couple of sprinkles like that just so it's visible in the soil. So not the whole amount, I'm putting that back. It's the amount of cayenne pepper you put in a dish to make it spicy. Mix all that in. Then we just test our plant. There we go. We need a little bit more height in there. Now, you, you purists might be horrified by this bag, but this is a generic garden center orchid mix, which is fairly loose, but not crazy loose. Now, if you were potting something a bit more specialist, then you would probably use specialist orchid bark, which is much looser, and then you mix it to your own requirements with perlite or sphagnum moss, whatever it is that you're planting. But I have to say with my native dendrobiums, as I said, maybe it's familiarity breeding contempt, but I don't go to a huge amount of trouble with their potting medium. Forgive me as I do this. So there we go. Obviously you try and want to achieve the same height uh, of the root surface as it was in the previous pot. But again, they're not that fussy. So if you do cover these roots a little bit, it's not gonna be the end of the world. So yes, perhaps for me here in Australia, one of the only times I would use a generic orchid mix out of the bag, but it works. All of my Australian orchids are potted in the same manner. But as you saw, I did aerate around the base there with, uh, with charcoal and pumice stones. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. As ever, when you're potting orchids, don't get too crazy pushing down because the roots do need to be loose, not majorly pressed, but you also don't want too many crazy air pockets as well. Okay, there we are, and we are done. And here we are, plant lovers. Ta-da! My fabulously new potted dendrobium speciosum. Now, all the Australian native dendrobiums do like to be quite pot bound, but they're quite vigorous growers as well. So I really want to get some new canes on this and hopefully in spring we will see those and hopefully in spring we'll see flowers. So watch this space. I'm going to water this in now with a diluted solution of a seaweed based fertilizer. I dilute that to about one eighth of the recommended dose on the bottle. There we are. And remember, plant lovers, that I bought this at the same time as this zygopedalum. Now, a few of you were concerned about disturbing the roots, but as you can see, super healthy. And what you perhaps can also see is the new growths, the new growth, and there is another one coming up in the middle there. So the zygopedalum is alive and well, and it is thriving. I'm not sure if those shoots are gonna flower who knows, we'll have to see what happens with those. But anyway, I just want you all to know that it's happy and well. So plant lovers, from my Dendrobium Speciosum Rescue and my Zygopedalum Rescue, thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe if you're interested in what I'm doing. Watch this space in spring. So my Kingianums and the Sarcocolis will be coming out at about the same time as this. So fingers crossed that we'll get some blooms. I'm gonna put this now out in the garden. It's gonna be exposed to the elements, so it's not under any shelter. It's gonna be getting quite a bit of morning sun and a bit of afternoon sun, but are then dappled light. Hopefully that'll be perfect and we'll watch this space. So plant lovers, thank you. I hope everything's fine wherever you are. Everything is growing well and I look forward to seeing you next week with something else interesting.